Hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to attend my oral defense. Today, I'll present the fruits from the past four years researching on soft keyboard shortcuts, or in short, soft cuts. This would not have been possible without the guidance from my two advisors, Simon and Hyowon, collaboration with experts from various institutions, and also support from family and friends. Let's begin. First of all, command selection mechanisms vary from one operating system to another. For instance, imagine you are browsing on an iPhone and you want to find a particular word. Do you know how to do so? First, we have to tap on the share icon and then slide up to reveal more items before finally tapping on the find command. Well, how about on Android? Instead of the share icon, we have to tap on this kebab menu icon and then tap on the find command. Now, if we compare to our desktop or laptop experience, the same find command can be found through a similar menu hierarchy. But an alternative shorter route is made available through hotkeys by cording the command or control key with the F key on the keyboard. So there are two main problems we want to highlight. First is how slow and difficult command selections are on our mobile devices. A frequent task like finding words should not be this tedious and slow. Another example is the undo command. Most iPhone users will not know how that undo is mapped to a shaking gesture unless they Google it out or trigger it by accident. Beyond performance and discoverability, the bigger problem we have to acknowledge is that there is a lack of consistency across applications and OS. As we can see from this example, for the same find and undo command, users have to look for different menu icons or invoke the shaking gesture. Why is this a problem? This is because, especially in today's context, where we often interact with multiple devices, inconsistent mechanism forces users to constantly adjust their techniques as they switch between devices. Hotkeys, on the other hand, are well-established and unified. So this got us thinking. What if we could leverage our prior knowledge of hotkeys from physical keyboards and transfer it to multi-touch keyboards. We call this approach softcuts, which is an abbreviation for soft keyboard shortcuts. Now, let me show you briefly how we conceive the idea of softcuts. Back in 2018, we were studying how multi-touch typing can be enhanced from a modded interaction perspective. First of all, what is modded interaction? It can be generalized as when the same input to a system generates different output depending on what the currently active mode is. For instance, if you love to sketch on your tablet, the same finger swipe can render different styles depending on which mode or tool was selected prior. So mode in a way increases the functionality of a few simple actions. We were inspired by this study conducted three decades ago for non-computer devices, and we took the opportunity to apply a similar approach to today's multi-touch phones. In the context of typing, our phones are not able to accommodate the layout used by the physical keyboard. Hence, sacrifices had to be made by prioritizing the lowercase characters in the default display, while the remaining keys can be accessed through mode switching. Let's take a look at the mode switching interaction between languages. We modeled the existing interaction and found inefficient features like single directional loop in yellow and the slow hold and tap gesture in red. So we propose an enhanced model by choosing multi-directional transitions. As you can see, all our new arrows are no longer single-sided 
and by adopting the faster hold and release gesture as shown by the blue and red arrows. The takeaway from this process is that we were able to drastically reduce the number of tabs needed to type the same string of characters. For example, the existing system would need nine mode switching tabs, but our proposed system can reduce it by three or six tabs depending on which variation was used. At the same time, our proposed design offers additional space for one more key. So we took this opportunity to introduce the command key. And for the first time, we imagine the possibility of invoking hotkeys on the smartphone. This is how Softcuts was brought to life. Next is where things get more interesting. We ask ourselves the following questions. As a new mechanism, users would not know that Softcuts exists. How should we design the interface such that it is easy for users to discover soft cuts? Beyond discovering it, there are many ways to support selections, which one of them is most robust for soft cuts. We were also curious to how much novices could tap on prior knowledge and how much experts could retain the knowledge. Last but not least, we want to know how well Softcut's keyboard layout would stand against an alternative grid layout. We will be answering them as we go through each project. And the overarching goal behind these four questions is that we hypothesize that Softcut's can be capitalized to offer a unified and efficient command selection mechanism on mobile devices suitable for both novices and experts. Let's dive into our project focusing on Softcuts discoverability. So for a successful hotkey activation, there are two steps. Users have to first discover the modifier key, command or control, and users have to discover which command is mapped to which letter key. We split these two steps into two separate studies starting with the letter keys first. Well, we found three commercial attempts to implement soft cuts, but most users would struggle to discover it. Let me show you why. First, we have the Samsung Galaxy tablet, which simply highlights the letter keys with blue color. Second, we have the Microsoft Surface tablet, which does not use any color highlight, but printed the command name. Third, we also found an app called Swipe, which is famous for its swipe typing, but it has been discontinued since 2018 and it did not render any visual feedback unlike those by Samsung and Microsoft. Between Samsung and Microsoft, it is unclear why only a subset of the commands was rendered as available. For instance, frequent commands like bolding were actually invocable but the B keys were not visualized accordingly. These limitations and lack of consensus motivated us to investigate which representation maximizes discoverability. We have three design variants to compare. First variant is letter only. Second variant shows both letter plus name of command. Third variant shows both icon plus name of command. This last variant is inspired by Optimus Popularis and TDK, which use only command icons in their physical keyboards. 12 participants were invited to complete a series of tasks in both Notes and Browser app prototype. We then asked the participants to rate their experience in terms of these seven areas. Results show that while there was a strong dislike for letter only, there was a preference for icon plus name. And letter plus name could serve as the next best alternative to icon plus name. To conclude, we can now recommend future designs to use icon plus name and avoid letter only 
and perhaps allow personal customization using letter plus name for users who prefer a less cluttered and minimalist style. Now that we are done with study one, let's proceed to study two from, from the same discoverability project. In this study, we wanted to investigate if factors like saliency and familiarity of modifier key affect the discoverability of soft cuts. First, we have keyboard and keyboardless conditions. Keyboard condition is non-salient because the presence of a keyboard makes it harder to discover soft cuts. Then we vary the familiarity by using command or control labels and introducing a custom new one. In total, we have these four conditions. To support our investigation, we used the same note-taking app prototype and hosted it on a remote platform called Maze before recruiting crowd workers from MTurk. A total of 160 crowd workers were involved, randomly and evenly split into each condition. We required participants to be familiar with iPhones because our interface design was based on the iOS Notes application. We also inserted a trick question to remove participants who randomly completed the study. And we implemented two approaches, native and soft cuts. On the left is the native approach with contextual menus. For pasting, selecting, and bolding, both approaches can be used. Soft cuts require users to tap on the left or right modifier key and then the command key next. Undo and color commands can only be selected through soft cuts and not the native approach. The tasks were split into two missions. To complete mission one, participants could either use the native or the soft cuts approach. We wanted to see if users spontaneously discover soft cuts without any pressure to do so. So this is our first measure and it is similar to that conducted by Appert and Gogwir. If participants fail to complete this mission, they would not proceed to mission two. Mission two has undo and color commands which are only accessible via soft cuts. In this second mission, we are forcing the discovery of soft cuts, and we excluded those who already had discovered soft cuts in mission one. Lastly, we also measured the overall discovery across both missions as a whole. The result for our discovery rates is interesting. We initially hypothesized that the more salient or the more familiar a modifier key is, the easier it is to discover soft cuts. But we were surprised when our analysis shows no significant differences, suggesting that saliency and familiarity of modifier keys do not affect the discoverability of soft cuts in any way. An interesting point of comparison is between our spontaneous and enforced discovery rates. When we merge all four conditions, we found out that when soft cuts is made compulsory to complete a task, discovery rate at least tripled. However, we also asked participants about their familiarity with desktop hotkeys, and there is a significant difference in our spontaneous discovery, suggesting that the discoverability of soft cuts is positively influenced by how many desktop hotkeys they knew or have used. For those that completed both missions, we also asked them to rate their experience using soft cuts. We found no effect of saliency or familiarity on subjective rating. We were surprised to receive several detailed feedback when these crowd workers could easily choose to write a one-word answer for the open-ended feedback option. One of them loves how all the commands are available in a small little package and found soft cuts to be a simple yet smart thing to do. Another crowd worker if, if an, even shared that they wouldn't mind paying for a feature like soft cuts because such discoverability problem is frustrating to them. We conclude that there is no effect of saliency or familiarity on discoverability. 
but familiarity with hotkeys knowledge or usage does affect and there are qualitative benefits of using using familiar labels some participants wish that they were informed of the meaning behind a new custom icon instead of having to guess so we recommend feature designs to use either command or control key this marks the end of our discoverability project and we are now able to answer the first question we set in the beginning now that users could discover softcuts which method would be best to facilitate the selections that is why our next project focuses on input methods to switch between text editing and command selection mode from this video the Samsung tablet requires users to hold or maintain the modifier key while selecting the commands. Microsoft tablet has its modifier key to support command selection only once, which means that users have to tap on the control key again if they want to select consecutive commands. And as the name suggests, the swipe app required users to swipe their fingers from the modifier key to the command key. As you can see, this lack of standardized input method motivated us to study how the different configurations and mobility scenarios affect performance and usage. In the first study of this project, we focus on the performance of input method across various configurations. We excluded configurations that are physically not feasible or challenging. So our analysis will be in two parts, part one for one-handed and part two for two-handed. These are the five configurations that our 12 participants needed to use in our study. The first method is user maintain, which relies on holding the modifier key with one finger and activates the hotkey with another finger. The second method is once which relies on two sequential taps, first on the modifier key and then on the hotkey. The third method is swipe, which relies on sliding the finger from the modifier key to the hotkey. We measured the time and accuracy of each trial and also subjective rating of each condition. For one-handed interaction, we found no significant difference in terms of time. But once is found to be more accurate than swipe. For two-handed interaction, there is a significant effect of input method on time with once performing better. There is also a significant interaction between input method and device, with user maintain being faster on phone than on tablet and swipe being faster on tablet than on phone. And there is a significant effect of input method on accuracy with ones performing better than swipe. There is a significant interaction between input method and device with swipe being more accurate on tablet than on phone. In addition, we also found a significant effect of orientation on time with portrait conditions performing faster. There is also a significant interaction between orientation and input method, with portrait being faster on phone, while landscape being faster on tablet. Last but not least, we have subjective ratings, which showed that for tablet interaction, once was rated more favorably than user maintained in terms of slide, speed, and comfort. And once is also perceived to be more accurate than swipe. This sums up our first study from this project on input methods. Now we proceed to the second study focusing on usage adoption. Since the three input methods are compatible with one another, they could potentially be implemented together. So users have the freedom to use the, the, the one that they want depending on their preference. We were interested to see how the results from study one would translate when evaluated in a more realistic environment. Which of the three input methods would users adopt when they are not constrained and were tested across different configurations and mobility conditions like sitting, standing, and walking. Using the same design space as in the previous study, we prioritize some factors 
depending on the device used to keep the study within a manageable time frame. For phone, we deem the handedness as more important than the orientation of the device because landscape mode is not being extensively, extens extensively used on phones. For tablet, since supporting it with just one hand can result in fatigue, we set the tablet condition to two hands while varying the orientation factor. Similar to the previous study, we recruited 12 participants and measured selection time accuracy, and ratings. For this study, we also counted the number of times each input method is being used throughout the trials. Our results show that users do adopt once as the primary input method, as we can see from the long red bars. Interestingly, we can also see some usage of swipe, the green bar for phone, and some usage of user maintain, the blue bar for tablet. In addition, Activity affects the usage frequency of once and swipe, but activity does not affect the performance of once, hence making once a robust input method for real-life scenarios. We conclude that once performs best in terms of speed, accuracy, rating, and usage frequency, but as an alternative, swipe is preferred for one-handed phone interaction and user maintained for tablet interaction. This sums up our project focusing on input methods and now that users can discover and efficiently select commands with softcuts, let's explore the impact softcuts has on users' learnability. The assumption behind softcuts is that users can leverage their prior knowledge from desktop and transfer it to mobile devices. But can they? We will validate that very assumption in this project. Beyond learning transfer, we acknowledge that users like all of us here have different levels of knowledge when it comes to hotkey mapping. For example, someone who is a novice to the world of hotkeys would have zero knowledge of which command is mapped to which key. So our second question is, given a new mapping, how does it affect novices' learning rate? And over time, we hope that users could finally recall by memory to be able to use softcuts effectively. So we'll also validate to what extent users could retain the knowledge of new mapping. We have two mappings as our independent variables, realistic and abstract. The abstract mapping represents the worst case scenario where users have zero knowledge of the mapping and there is no advantage of mnemonic associations unlike that in realistic mapping. For instance, bold command in realistic mapping is associated with the letter B, but Brazil command in abstract mapping is not associated with the letter B. In addition, to av avoid confounding effect, we ensured both mappings share a similar distribution of commands in each row by having them vertically symmetrical of one another. We invited 12 participants to complete the selection task in both mappings. On the left is abstract mapping with flags. On the right is realistic mapping using text editing commands commonly found in Microsoft Word. And we measured their selection speed, accuracy, and subjective rating for each mapping. We also measured retention by showing a normal keyboard layout and asking them what the corresponding key is for each command. And we did this at multiple phases. First, at the end of the selection trials, subsequently the next day, three days later, and finally a week later. Our results show that our participants were only 5% slower in abstract mapping. This is rather expected because participants could benefit from prior knowledge in realistic mapping. But overall, abstract mapping is 1% more accurate than realistic mapping. In terms of retention rate, let's look at the darker red and blue lines. Red for abstract mapping and blue for realistic mapping. It makes sense that participants could remember realistic mapping more easily than the abstract one. But what is more interesting is that upon further analysis, 
we observe that many of their incorrect answers are adjacent to the target key. If we combine the correct key with the adjacent keys, we can see from the red dotted line that the rate for abstract mapping increases by 25%. This suggests that while retention for new mapping is not perfect, participants could still estimate the general area where the item was located even after one week. And this is good considering that realistic mapping benefits from years of exposure and practice while abstract mapping was only used for 15 minutes. We conclude that by leveraging prior knowledge, speed performance increases by 5%. But interestingly, this also shows that in the worst case scenario, a new mapping does not lose by a lot. Participants could also achieve efficient and stable performance for both mappings. And we discovered how important the role spatial memory plays in a long-term recall. Now that we, we know users could leverage prior knowledge and retain them, it is time for us to finally test how the keyboard layout strategy of softcards would stand against another layout. In particular, we want to compare the performance between keyboard and grid layout. Why grid layout? Prior works have demonstrated the speed and accuracy of grid layout across different devices. FastTap is one example in the context of phone or tablet interaction. FastTap requires users to chord a modifier key at the bottom left corner with a command key in the grid layout. We also found chord pad, which applies the grid layout to the laptop's trackpad. Users first had to press the function key and the favorite application will be rendered on the screen. Then, users could type on the trackpad to make the selections accordingly. The grid layout has also been proposed for smartwatch and tab tabletop interaction. Therefore, we were motivated to investigate how would SoftCut's keyboard layout stand against an alternative grid layout. So, we measured the speed and accuracy of selections made on each layout and also on each device. To avoid confounding effect of prior knowledge, we use flags and other categories to represent the commands. As we can see from, from, the sa from these images, for the same device and orientation, the grid layout consumes a much larger screen area. Therefore, we hypothesize that selections, use, selections using the grid layout is faster and more accurate than the keyboard layout. We built a prototype to facilitate the study. On the left is a demonstration of grid layout on a phone. On the right is that of keyboard layout. And similarly, we have the table, a tablet demonstration as well. The grid layout is on the left. while the keyboard layout is on the right. For both phone and tablet, we did not limit how our 16 participants helped them. We only specified the, the constraint that they were not allowed to place the device on any surface and have to use both hands. This is to simulate a challenging scenario like on public transport where users could be using their mobile devices without any table. Our results show that there is a significant effect of layout on the speed of selections. The keyboard layout can be up to 220 milliseconds slower than the grid layout. Despite the slower speed, we, we are surprised to find that the smaller space afforded by the keyboard layout does not suffer from any accuracy drop. Both grid and keyboard layout support highly accurate selections similarly between 97 and 99%. For ratings, although there were no effects for tablet interaction, participants rated the phone interaction to be harder, less accurate, and less comfortable with a keyboard layout than with a grid layout. This is not surprising as the keyboard layout on the phone only affords a very limited screen for each command as compared to the grid layout. However, we found interesting remarks by some participants when we asked them to elaborate on their reasons. For instance, 
a larger surface area may help in accuracy and be rated positively. But participants commented that it also means their fingers had to move over a bigger distance, and this causes fatigue over time. On the other hand, the compact keyboard layout requires some users only minimal effort to reach all of its corners, so this shows that there is an advantage for the keyboard layout to occupy a smaller screen estate. We conclude that despite the selections with the keyboard layout is lower and perceived less favorably than using a grid layout, it is worth noting that the keyboard layout can save 60% of space in return for the 12 to 16% drop in speed, while maintaining a similarly high accuracy. In addition, the grid layout could vary in terms of the number of cells. A tablet could possibly afford 8x5 configuration, while a phone could only support 4x5. Grid layout is overall at a disadvantage because it does not benefit from any standardized mapping, unlike that by hotkeys for keyboard layout. This marks the end of our project focusing on spatial layout. With that, we have answered all four questions we set at the beginning. And now let's recap. We initially hypothesized that our proposed soft cuts could capitalize keyboard layout to offer a unified and efficient command selection mechanism on mobile devices suitable for novices and experts. We tested this hypothesis through multiple projects. First, we explore how modded interaction can be exploited to redesign soft keyboards in the context of text entry scenarios. This project was how SoftCuts was first brought to life. Second, we extend our focus to command selection scenarios by investigating how visual design elements of SoftCuts affect its discoverability for novices. Our results recommend two things. Use the design with command names and icons to represent each key, and use familiar modifier key like command or control. Third, we investigate how different input modif how different input methods of softcuts affect the performance and usage across device configurations and mobility conditions. Our results show that the in input method once, which is the same as sequential tabs, is most robust. Fourth, we study how the command map mappings affect users' learnability. Our results show that participants can leverage prior knowledge and also sustain retention even after one week. Last but not least, we compare the performance of command selections between SoftCuts keyboard layout and an alternative grid layout. Our results show that SoftCuts keyboard layout may be slower by 220 milliseconds, but its accuracy is as good and it offers greater spatial stability than grid layout, despite occupying a much reduced screen real estate. Integrating the insights from our projects, this is how we imagine the concept of soft cuts could be easily incorporated into existing application. While browsing the web, if you want to find a word, we can press this floating modifier key once and tap on the find key or at the position of F key. All in all, we have demonstrated and hopefully convinced all of you that SoftCuts could deliver a robust command selection performance on mobile devices, regardless of expertise in hotkeys. And now we want to share with you our vision for SoftCuts beyond this thesis. In the past five projects of SoftCuts, we have only been utilizing one modifier key, which is either control or command, depending on the OS. But it is not difficult to imagine that for complex applications like Adobe, Photoshop, that have too many commands such that the 26 letters are no longer sufficient. It is feasible it is a feasible direction for future work to explore the effects of nesting additional modifier keys like option or function. 
We imagine that such feature work could help to expand the input vocabulary of softcuts. This image is our illustration of softcuts on an Android phone's keyboard. So upon pressing the control key, the first layer of text editing command is then shown in the middle image. And we can substitute the non-relevant key with a new modifier key, which when pressed could reveal new layers of commands. This third image currently shows a very sparse mapping of the control and all combination of hotkeys. In fact, this represents an untapped potential that could increase the functionality of a given app through softcuts. Second, there is a need to standardize hotkey mappings comprehensively. While basic commands like cut, copy, and paste have been implemented without discrepancies, there is room for improvement for other more advanced commands. For instance, for the same task of taking a screenshot, Mac OS users need to combine Command, Shift, and Number 3 keys, while Windows users need to combine Alt and Print screen keys. Future work could adopt similar steps taken by the Unicode Consortium to uh, provide a unique number for every character regardless of platform, program, or language. This Unicode standard is the reason behind our ability to communicate coherently despite the variety in rendering style between OS and application. We propose the following steps for individuals and organizations to consider taking in the near future. The first step is to, to assemble a consortium representing the relevant stakeholders from software or hardware companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft to research institutions and to government ministries. The second is to consolidate existing mapping across applications and devices. The third is to review the inconsistencies by conducting studies or using telemetry data to better understand users' ergonomic preferences and feasibility of coding certain key combinations. Then, the consortium members could make informed decisions through discussions and voting process. Last but not least, it is equally important to ensure that such a standard is universally accessible. Our results from the Learnability project suggest that users could leverage prior knowledge of hotkeys from desktop to soft keyboard. We found that a similar skill transfer, we hope that a similar skill transfer could happen in the in the opposite direction this is because there is evidence from berard and rochette's work in 2015 which suggests that target acquisition tasks learn with direct touch transferred very well to a different modality when a physical disk is used most recently ricey et al conducted a study on retroactive transfer and demonstrated the benefits of using similar keyboard layouts and increasing the number of alternations a retroactive transfer is the influence of a new skill on the acquisition of a previously learned skill. In addition, evidence from the latest worldwide market share highlights how the sales of mobile devices exceeded that of desktops between 2016 and 2017. This trend will only become more pronounced over the next decade, especially with the introduction of 5G network technology. If softcuts were to be integrated into mainstream mobile devices, this means that the users may be exposed to softcuts before the traditional physical hotkeys. As a result, skill transfer will be from softcuts on a soft keyboard to regular hotkeys on a physical keyboard. Last but not least, today's research on keyboard interaction is no longer limited to only 2D surfaces. And there is a growing demand for productivity and entertainment in a 3D environment like mixed reality or virtual reality. This represents an untapped potential for future work to adapt soft cuts to the XR environment. XR stands for extended reality and it is an umbrella term covering AR, VR, and MR. This rendering is one example we imagine if softcuts mechanism is to be extended to AR or MR. An overlay of hotkey mapping can be rendered when the user presses the modifier key. 
Alternatively, in the context of VR, it has become easier than ever to set the desired work environment from the comfort of one's room. And there are instances where users may still want to use the long menu hierarchies. So we suggest making use the infinite space in VR to show visual guidance of command mapping using a keyboard layout. Hopefully, this could strengthen one's spatial memory and accelerate the transition from, from a slow menu approach to an efficient hotkey approach. This is a list of publications in the last four years. The five projects shared in this presentation culminated in the three bolded publications. All these eight publications would not have been possible without the help of participants and also contributions from collaborators. In particular, Quentin Roy and Prof. Don Daniel Vogel from the University of Waterloo in Canada and Sylvain Malacria in, from Inria Lille in France. With that, I would like to thank all of you for the undivided attention and I hope there's a thing or two to be learned from our journey realizing the potential of soft cuts. Thank you.